Today on Little Wars TV, we're wargaming one of the greatest military operations of World War II that never happened. It's a what-if moment historians have debated ever since. What if Adolf Hitler hadn't canceled Operation Hercules, the invasion of Malta? The tiny island of Malta served as a British fortress in the Mediterranean, interdicting Axis supply lines to Rommel and North Africa. But by the summer of 1942, Germany and Italy amassed enough planes, landing craft, and troops to launch a carefully planned invasion. Today, exactly 80 years later, you'll see seven veteran wargamers test the actual Axis invasion plan, exactly as Italian Commando Supremo mapped it out. We'll review the operational invasion plan, and then we'll put it to the test. Can Italy and Germany knock Malta out of the war once and for all? Or will the British fortress hold against the odds? And why did Hitler scrub the operation at the last minute? Find out now on Little Wars TV. Malta. Island. Fortress. Naval base. Landing field. Malta. The irremovable thorn in the soft underbelly of the Axis. Whichever way the aggressors turn in the Mediterranean, there stands Malta, a stumbling block in their path. But the tiny island, with its 275,000 people, must live from convoys that fight through. The enemy is only 60 miles away in Sicily. Whoever holds Malta controls the central Mediterranean. The enemy raids mount by fives and by tens by dozens and by scores, by the hundreds. And still the Luftwaffe sends out more of its bombers to blast, to burn, to butcher Malta. Well, Ed, I think that old wartime footage offers a nice dramatic summary of why the little island of Malta held such outsized importance. The map says it all. Malta may be small, but it's big enough for several RAF airfields and a naval base. And very early in the war, the British were much quicker to realize Malta's strategic value than the Italians. Malta's position in the Mediterranean put it squarely in the Axis shipping lanes to North Africa, and Italian convoys suffered dearly as a result. By early 1941, the situation was critical enough for Hitler and Mussolini to discuss a joint operation to neutralize the island. Indeed, but which island? Well, what do you mean, Ed? We're talking about Malta. What about Crete? The Axis partners could only afford to focus on one major air and naval landing at a time. Would it be Crete or Malta? Hitler famously decided that it must be Crete first and Malta second. Well, we all know how Operation Mercury goes, and that's a war game topic for another day. But let's just say that it is a costly Axis victory, one that leaves deep scars and bloody lessons for the Germans. Lesson number one, Hitler decides that he'll let the Italians do the heavy lifting next time. They'll need to supply the bulk of the manpower and take the lead. Hitler and Goering won't risk their beloved paratroopers in the same way again. Lesson number two. A much heavier sustained bombing campaign must precede the invasion to soften up the British defenses. And lesson number three. The Italians want their landings to be in less obvious locations in order to surprise the British and avoid Malta's heaviest defenses. Ed, in our Malta war game, we're going to test the Italian invasion plan developed by Commando Supremo. We're going to use their timetable and their landing zones. And for the British, we'll replicate the same gun position and troop deployments. In summer 1942, the British defenses on Malta are dangerously thin. Just four brigades of some 25,000 men. And those aforementioned Axis air attacks have badly suppressed the island, reducing cities to rubble and damaging airfields. The Italian invasion plan for Operation Hercules is extremely bold, especially by Italian standards. Rather than landing their troops on the obvious beaches, they opt for a cliffside attack where the British are not expecting them. And it's true, the British were not expecting the Italians to be so foolish as to scale the cliffs. The Italian plan is to land paratroopers to secure the bridgehead, followed up by amphibious landings along those rugged cliffs. These troops will secure a small port, then allowing heavy equipment to arrive by ship. Additional landings would follow at other strategic points. There are two additional concerns that we have to highlight, Ed, and the first is that the Italians are only landing with six days of supplies on Malta, so they have a very strict timetable. 
and two, the Royal Navy is lurking somewhere in the Mediterranean, and this absolutely terrifies the Italians. So far, we've been talking about all of the Italians involved in this operation, but the Germans were prepared to send elements of a paratrooper division to spearhead the attack, and much of the air power would be provided by the Luftwaffe, along with the massive, massive amount of oil, some 40,000 tons, required to fuel the Italian Navy. The Italians were always reluctant to put to sea, but Operation Hercules absolutely depended on their naval transport, offshore bombardment, and cover from the threat of the British Navy. So there we have it. The table is set for Operation Hercules to commence in the summer of 1942. Well, I suppose we should talk about the table, and it's absolutely stunning. Oh yes, one of the most impressive war game tables I've ever seen. One inch represents 220 meters on this incredible exact scale model of Malta. This masterpiece is the creation of Bruce Weigel, and he very kindly invited our club to play test the Malta scenario at his house in the lead up to Historicon, where Bruce will run this game for the public. Well, I'm Bruce Weigel, and we are here in my extraordinary game room playing second iteration of the Malta invasion scenario. This is uh, a project that I've been working on for a couple of years, gathering information on a battle that never happened, but was probably the most thoroughly planned non-invasion of the Second World War. If you stick around until the end of Bruce's Malta scenario today, we'll talk about why Hitler made the fateful decision to cancel Operation Hercules. Yes, but today, Ed, 80 years later, the operation is a go. And it's time for us to get to that tabletop and find out if the British can hold Malta against the odds. Defending the island of Malta for king and country, we have Mark, Bill, and Ed. They have four brigades spread across the island, along with some field artillery and numerous fixed gun emplacements ringing the coastline. The quality of the British and Maltese infantry are average at best. Remember, these are not veteran frontline combat formations. On the Axis side, I'm joined by Josh, Miles, and Greg. We have to use the landing locations and timetable mapped out by Italian Commando Supremo in 1942. But once our troops are on the ground, we have some flexibility to act on our own initiative. Greg is in overall command, with Josh playing the role of Rompke the elite German paratroop general and his troops, who Hitler has begrudgingly approved to join the operation. Miles and I each control elements of five Italian divisions arriving by sea and air from Sicily. Total available forces amount to over 55,000. We'll also enjoy some offshore Italian battleship support, bound to be ineffective if history is any guide, and almost complete control of the skies. Regular Luftwaffe bomber and ground attack sorties are at our disposal to hit targets across the island as we see fit. Our speculative scenario begins on August 1st, one of the possible dates considered for the historical operation. As planned, the first wave to hit the island will be the German and Italian paratroopers aimed to secure the Famagusta beach zone. Bruce has developed a simple chart to randomize airborne landings, and the initial drops are quite successful. I'm running the Fulgore Division, which rates as the best Italian combat formation on the island, second only to Josh's Fallschirmjägers. We immediately push inland against little opposition, neutralizing gun emplacements and easily claiming the first Axis objectives. The cliffside beaches at Famagusta are secure. On D-Day, August 1st, the initial Italian amphibious landings start hitting the beach. Here too, Bruce has a chart the Italian troops roll against to see if they're able to get ashore. And it's here that Miles and I miss a few key die rolls, which means our troops are hitting the beach piecemeal, many of the landing craft idling in the sea waiting to disembark. It's a choppy start, but much to our delight, no resistance at Famagusta. In fact, we've hardly spotted any British on the island at all. In this scenario, all stationary British formations can remain hidden. So while the Axis players know where gun emplacements are located, we haven't spotted any infantry or tanks. 
A German glider assault hits Fort Benghiza, surprising the defenders and successfully securing the entrance to Calafrana Bay. The miniatures in these pictures are from Pico Armor. And good news, if you think this looks as cool as we do, the folks at Pico Armor have a 10% off code available to our viewers if you check out using the coupon code LITTLEWARSTV10. D-Day ends with about 20,000 Italian and German troops ashore. Yes, it was piecemeal and a bit haphazard along the cliffs, but by the end of the first day, the historical invasion plan has clearly succeeded in landing where the British least expected, allowing for a significant Axis bridgehead on Malta. This might be a good time to discuss the Axis objectives that Bruce has defined for this scenario. Based on historical objectives, the Italians aim to achieve in their 1942 plan. Simply getting ashore won't be good enough. To ship proper supplies to Malta, the invasion needs to secure one of the main seaports and at least one airfield no later than day four of the operation. To compel a British surrender, the heavily fortified capital Valletta must be captured before the threat of the British Navy is detected in the vicinity. Bruce has a chart that the Axis players roll on each day to determine what panic-inducing rumors are detected about the British Navy coming to the rescue of the defenders. So when we begin day two of the invasion, the Axis players are well aware that time is not on our side. We need to seize Malta quickly. Despite the urgent need to advance, I have to admit, we found ourselves deeply concerned about the lack of information regarding British deployments. Where are they hiding? Fearing that our beaches could be vulnerable, Greg assigns one of my regiments to take up defensive positions on the heights at the western edge of Famagusta, while the rest of our forces are ordered to secure the Halfar airfield and advance on the small port at Califrana Bay. Around midday on August 2nd, the first major British resistance is encountered. Dug in at the airfield, a firefight breaks out, and soon, more firing can be heard around the Luqua airfield. Roll the dice, Tony. That's Germans, that's me. Uh, I got a gun here and a gun there that we're assaulting. 8, 9, 10, 11. <laughs> One, One defender disrupted. <laughs> German and Italian paratroopers, our best formations, are the tip of the spear and gradually drive the British from their defensive positions. We're using Bruce's gained by battle rules, a system he's been developing over the years. In this game, a base of figures is an entire company. Combat is abstract and quickly handled by rolling a single d20 on this combat table. The type of attack you can make, and there are four possible types, depend on how far you moved in the turn and whether or not you outnumber your enemy. There are also quality advantages in combat and the paratroopers are clearly the best troops on the table, pushing our line closer and closer to Valletta. The push stalls late in the afternoon on day two when an entire British brigade is spotted moving down towards the Takali airfield. It's a large force, well over 6,000 strong. But where exactly are they going? To counterattack the beach or to reinforce the British center at Luqua? Day two is coming to an end. Nervously, I'm guarding the western sector of the beach. Josh and I are heavily engaged in the center. Miles has overrun the Halfar airfield and slipped some Italian Marines into the port of Berzebu. The Axis invasion has now secured the beach, an airfield, and a port for future supply delivery. At this point, Operation Hercules isn't just on schedule. We're pleased to be well ahead of schedule. Il Duce and the fewer will be most pleased with our efforts. End of day two. How's it going, guys? What do you think? Hard pressed. Hard pressed, yeah. So they, they come on with a lot of firepower. And um, kind of my counterattack with the Matildas was, was awesome. But it feels like it's spinning in the wind. Uh, it's getting a little desperate here in the south. I feel like they can push through a lot of holes. Uh, so we're banking on Hitler that he's going to pull out the Fallschirmjägers today. If he pulls out the Fallschirmjägers, then once again, the Hitler's great plan will help us. 
Well, gentlemen, we've arrived at the end of day two of the invasion of Malta, and uh, how do we feel it's going? It's actually not going bad, all things considered. I expected that we would have more resistance initially. I expected we would have a tougher time getting the amount of ground that we've taken. Yeah, we yeah. did really well on, on the landing rolls for right. the airborne yeah. and the amphibious landings. We all did really well, so we got the bulk of our troops right away. And we've seized one of the ports we have to seize. Yes. We got an airfield, we got the port, that was nice, although at the end of day two, a pretty large British counterattack materialized from the northern end of the island. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're going to have to, I guess, figure out how to deal with that. And, and I don't know how much they have left either. You know, all of our stuff is yeah. kind of on the table, and there still could be potential hidden... British units yeah. out here for us to deal with. So uh, going into day three, where are we thinking that we need to that we need to focus? That's an open debate. I think uh, I think we're going to plan to hold on the left on Tony's side, mm -hmm. maybe approach that, uh, and I think we're going to try to punch up the center because I have the one objective yeah. we have to take is the port right there. Right. Yeah. And they don't look all that strong here, but then again, they may be hiding something. Of course, we never actually pay attention to any of the plans we make, so who knows what we're really going to do. <laughs> Both sides know day three will be critical, and it's the southern end of the island where each side concentrates their artillery and airstrikes. Heavy barrages pound the area above Calafrana Bay. Miles is attempting to turn the British line, while Mark desperately fights to stave off the inevitable. Luftwaffe sorties continue to hit Mark's positions constantly, each and every turn. The British are in desperate need of help. Mark will be indirectly aided in his fight by a major counterattack from Bill's Northern Sector Brigade. Instead of attacking towards the beaches, they hit the center, smashing into the paratroopers and Fallschirmjäger and blunting the Axis Drive up the center of the island. Greg orders an Italian Reserve Regiment to support the center, siphoning off these critical reserves that were once promised to support Miles. Bill's counterattack in the center is a success, but one that's left the British flank vulnerable and exposed. I ask permission to leave my defensive positions above the beach zone and attack. Permission is swiftly granted, and this new movement forces Bill's British to double back, with Romke's paratroopers hot on their heels. As the sun sets over the Mediterranean on day three of the invasion, both British flanks are under intense pressure, with losses mounting quickly. A fresh Italian division is scheduled to land on day four, and the Axis players are confident that Valletta should be within Italian hands 24 hours from now. But this confidence is sorely tested on the morning of August 4th, when new orders arrive from Berlin and Rome. Starting on day four, the Axis players must roll on a chart to see if Hitler orders a withdrawal of the Fallschirmjägers. For us, this role is a disaster. Not only is Hitler ordering the immediate withdrawal of Romke, but Italian Commando Supremo has decided to send the Fulgori Division to North Africa to support Rommel's drive towards Egypt. Two divisions of paratroopers are removed from the table, ordered to return to the beach zone for embarkation. Right uh, thank you, Mein Fuhrer, for withdrawing the Fallschirmjägers of the Feldjori. <laughs> we are most dismayed by the actions of Herr Hitler. As we away. should be. Right, as everyone should be. The Axis Center has melted away, scrambling our carefully laid plans to finish off the British on day four. Fresh Italian troops are coming ashore at the port, but it's a raw formation of low-quality troops, the Napoli Division. These are no replacement for the loss of the elite paratroopers, but they'll have to suffice. All across the island, the Brits sense the time is right for a counterattack. Ed orders the reserves forward. The Italians pull back to buy time for the Napoli Division to plug the gaping hole left in our center. Day four may be a lost day for the Axis, but a new battle plan is drawn up for day five. Two more divisions are scheduled to land, including critical artillery and tank support. These new forces should be enough to seal Valletta's fate and restore the offensive. But alas, August 5th brings dire news to the Axis. Radio intercepts report rumors of Force H, the British Royal Navy, 
streaming aggressively towards Malta. Remember, Bruce has a chart that we've been rolling on each turn to see if the Royal Navy is reported nearby. And on day four, we roll a 10, the worst possible result. Panic over the Royal Navy suspends all Luftwaffe air sorties, cancels all landings of reinforcements, and orders all the, the Italian infantry on Malta defend in place for the day. There can be no Axis attacks at all today. And so, with this news on turn five, and after having played for about six hours, we called the game. The swift Axis conquest that had once seemed so certain has now evaporated. Could Malta be taken? If the rumors of the Royal Navy could be proven false, almost certainly yes, eventually. But our war game today exposed some of the critical vulnerabilities to the Axis invasion plan of 1942. Among them, the threat of the Royal Navy, Hitler's reluctance to fully commit his Fallschirmjägers as he did at Crete, the logistical constraints of supplying 50,000 men on a small island, and the over-reliance on Italian operational execution. Malta would have been the first Italian amphibious operation of the entire war, and clearly Hitler did not trust them to pull it off. Hitler's lack of faith in the Italians was a primary reason why Hercules was canceled. Yes, but not the only reason. No, in fact, one of the invasion's biggest cheerleaders ultimately may have doomed it. Erwin Rommel had once begged Hitler and Mussolini to neutralize Malta to secure his supply lanes to Europe, but in the summer of 1942, Rommel scored a major victory at Tobruk. Tobruk handed Rommel a vast stockpile of supplies to fuel his advance into Egypt, changing his immediate priorities. Now, instead of supplies, he wanted men and he wanted some of the troops earmarked for Operation Hercules. The paratroopers that played such a critical role in our war game today were in fact Central Rommel in North Africa. Yes, Hercules was delayed and then formally canceled in November 1942 after Rommel's crushing defeat at El Alamein. In the hour of Martha's ordeal, King George VI pays a sailor's tribute to the island's allegiance to the Royal Navy. All the bells and all the churches ring, and all the people greet His Majesty. Here in the Mediterranean are the elements on which aggression shatters. The King, the people, the Royal Navy. Once again, a huge thank you to Bruce for inviting us to play the scenario with him. This was a real treat for us, and his meticulous research on Operation Hercules made for an awesome gaming experience. And you should come to Historicon, the largest historical wargaming convention in the United States, to see Bruce's Malta table up close and personal for yourself. He's running multiple sessions of this fabulous game at the show next weekend in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We'll be heading to the show in a few days, and we can't wait to see you there.